Our final speaker in this uh, track, Mason Burkalto, is going to be joining us to be talking about uh, blockchain uh, on the uh, connecting APIs to the blockchain. Thank you. Hey, Mason. Great to see you. Um, How's it going? Good, thanks. Ready for your chat. Do you want to um, load up your presentation? Okay, fantastic. I'll let you uh, get straight into it. Um, have a great presentation. Break a leg. Great. Thanks, Mark. Hi. My name is Mason Burkhalter. I am the Director of Operations at API3. By now, I'm sure that most of you have heard of blockchain technology and at least have a crude understanding <clears throat> of Bitcoin. What you may not know, though, is that this rapidly growing technology is dependent on high quality data and fundamentally needs APIs to continue to grow and allow for new innovations to take place. Although blockchain technology can seem complex, it's actually quite straightforward if you consider that the overarching end goal is the same as the traditional information technology space and that the key differences behind the scenes simply allow for higher value capture opportunities than what the current technology solutions in Web 2.0 provide. Web 2.0 just being the traditional internet. In order for you to fully appreciate how important it is for API providers to adopt blockchain technology though, you first need to have kind of a an understanding or a breakdown of what blockchain technology really is, followed by smart contracts and then oracles. This information lays a groundwork that's really necessary for understanding how far the space has come and where it's going, but also to outline the key challenges in this space that have stifled adoption from API providers so far. Once we've covered these high level topics, we can then break down AirNode, the solution that API3 has developed to make mainstream adoption uh, <clears throat> for API providers like, like you, a no-brainer, because it is free, it's designed so that you have nothing to lose while gaining a brand new, rapidly growing customer base. So what is blockchain technology exactly? Blockchain technology allows information to be distributed, but not copied. And then it can be easily thought of as a, a new iteration of the internet, which is why it's commonly referred to as Web 3.0. As one of our founders, Sasha, wrote in a recent article, just as Web 2.0 was marked by interoperability, user-generated content, and participatory culture, Web 3.0 is defined by decentralization. The primary difference between blockchain technology and the current way that data is served and stored is that with a blockchain, data is completely decentralized, transparent, and immutable. Instead of the traditional server client model, uh, blockchains broadcast transactional data across a distributed peer-to-peer -peer network to validate accuracy and achieve consensus. Whereas in the traditional model, there is typically a single server or group of servers controlled by a single entity that retrieves information for a client, with blockchains, the information retrieval process is achieved through consensus of nodes that all validate that new information is accurate and unadulterated. Blockchain nodes are operated usually by different users all over the world who are incentivized to validate transactions for some sort of a reward, usually in, in the form of a payment of cryptocurrency. Because there's no single point of attack that's possible in blockchains, they are highly secure and have the potential to save industries billions of dollars in cybersecurity labor costs, and a myriad of other inefficiencies by eliminating principal agent problems and cutting out middlemen. Blockchains can be public or private or a hybrid of both, but they importantly cannot see information outside of the chain natively. A smart contract is simply a contract between two parties that's self-executing, completely automated, and tokenized onto a blockchain meaning that the token symbolizes the utility that smart contracts actually provide and can be considered a unit of measure of value. Really though, smart contracts can easily be considered to just be applications that run inside of blockchains. Smart contracts are stored on a public ledger, which is a blockchain, and are auditable and transparent. Smart contracts also have triggering events coded into them so that when some event or list of events or conditions are met, the contract self-executes and each party involved in the contract observes whatever predefined outcomes 
that were coded into it. While Bitcoin is like a use case of blockchain technology for digital currencies, uh, smart contracts make it possible to completely disrupt all of the ways in which we currently do business and exchange value in the real world. For example, an easy use case to consider would be parametric insur insurance. Suppose you live in a high risk natural disaster area like along the Gulf Coast in the United States where hurricanes are more prevalent. A smart contract could be coded to define the nature of what qualifies as a claim, what the predetermined payout would be, and so on. Further, your home could be fitted with hardware that alerts the smart contract when water damage or structural damage occurs. That, coupled with geolocation and weather data, could all be codified into the contract so that if a hurricane strikes and destroys your home, you are immediately paid out from your claim. No paperwork, no phone calls to your insurance provider, no hassle. The insurance provider saves money on direct labor costs for claims adjusters and mitigates the risks associated with insurance fraud. And the customer is given the peace of mind in knowing that the insurance claims process is transparent, trustworthy, and seamless. Another really good example would be like a, a high-end wine cellar that faces a constant struggle with international shipping when delays occur. A smart contract could be coded so that the buyer puts their payment for the shipment in an escrow held by the smart contract. Should there be a substantial delay that the seller um, basically can agree to have discounts uh, applied to the, the buyer's payment. And in this scenario, let's say that the shipment of wine was held up for two months at a customs port in Greece, which equates to a 10% discount due to the loss of shelf life of the wine. When the shipment of wine gets to the buyer, the escrow payment in the smart contract is released automatically minus a 10% discount, which is returned to the buyer. This saves the seller the time and costs associated with determining whether the buyer is being truthful and should be compensated, and also helps the seller determine if their current supply chain and logistics vendors are performing adequately. More importantly though, it gives the buyer the peace of mind in knowing that they will be handled fairly should any unforeseen events occur. And uh, it reduces, that, that would reduce the, the value of the wine, excuse me. Smart contracts have the power to totally disrupt the way that we do business by automating away circumstances in which we would normally need to rely on third party intermediaries in order to trust that the information that we receive during business is true. Just like blockchains, as a whole though, smart contracts also cannot see data outside of the blockchain natively. So now that we've discussed blockchains and smart contracts, um, it's time to break down oracles and this is where APIs become more relevant. An oracle is a means of retrieving external data to smart contracts and they act as a bridge or gateway between the outside world and blockchain applications. Like I mentioned previously, because of the way that blockchains achieve consensus, smart contracts and blockchain applications can't connect to data from the outside world. Access to real world data via APIs is fundamentally vital to meaningful value creation over the web and across applications in web three, just as is the case in, in web two. Accessing real world data is also vital to the functionality of actual smart contracts. Oracles basically query, verify, and validate data from sources outside of the blockchain and then relay that information to smart contract applications on chain. So they really can best be thought of as middleware between Web 2 and Web 3 applications. In the parametric insurance example of smart contracts, specific data is needed in order for the smart contract to function as expected. Without geolocation data, weather data, and possibly some hardware component that can relay actual property damage altogether, the smart contract wouldn't know when to self-execute and pay out an actual claim. And the problem, though, is, is really that if this process of data retrieval is not also decentralized, who's to say that the customer isn't manipulating the data in some way in order to commit insurance fraud? Conversely, who's to say that the insurance provider doesn't manipulate or come up with a variety of ways that um, negates their, their duty to pay out a claim um, and, and allows them to avoid it instead? You know, the bottom line is that in theory, the value proposition of blockchain technology is voided 
due to the essentialized sources of data that could be manipulated in some way. This problem with blockchains and smart contracts not being able to read APIs uh, natively without a middleware solution like Oracle's is known in the industry as the Oracle problem. And the timeline of Oracle innovations is relatively new, uh, but the first iteration of an Oracle solution was called a centralized Oracle. And these Oracles were owned <clears throat> by um, and operated by centralized entities uh, that would be in charge of relaying data from the API provider off-chain to the consumers of that data on the blockchain. Obviously, the solution didn't go very far because using a centralized Oracle requires users to trust the, the validity of the data and the people operating the Oracle node, which negates the entire value proposition of a decentralized, trustless, and automated blockchain uh, and, and smart contracts running in an automated fashion. Further, most API providers don't want a middleman in between them and their customers because they lose control of their pricing. They have to trust that the centralized Oracle provider would use their data appropriately uh, while not really being given much ability into that process, if any. The second and much more commonplace Oracle solution being used today is a decentralized Oracle that is run by Oracle node providers. These are small startup-like teams of developers who all run their own Oracle nodes as a business and operate within a network of other Oracle node operators. These node operators are almost all anonymous and their processes are opaque. So for API providers, it's still been a less than ideal solution because they don't wanna lose control over their pricing models and they also want oversight into how their data is being used by these third parties. This solution is also wholly unsecure as it adds a new attack layer between the providers and consumers of the data. Another key problem with the centralized Oracle node operators is that they typically require the API provider to pay for transaction fees that are inherent and required in blockchain ecosystems and must be paid in cryptocurrency. It's been our experience that most API providers don't wanna deal with cryptocurrencies at all. Additionally, these transaction costs are directly related to the inefficient manner in which data is retrieved, and it equates to anywhere from 20 to 50 cents per call or more. Lastly, there's rarely incentive for Oracle node operators to act in the best interest of the API provider or the consumer, especially for Oracle node operators that remain anonymous, which is the vast majority of them. In fact, as the networks of third-party Oracle node operators mature, the incentive to collude and misreport data in order to cheat for financial gain actually increases. So for example, if an Oracle node operator running the data feed for the price of Bitcoin can collude with other Oracle uh, node operators running the same data, they can easily manipulate a smart contract into executing the terms of some coded agreement in a way that benefits them financially. If this financial gain is in the hundreds of millions of dollars, which in DeFi, it usually is, they're better off colluding instead of performing their normal job function. And because they're mostly anonymous, they usually can even get away with it without repercussion. As the Oracle space continues to grow, the need for additional scrutiny and security has become painfully apparent. And this has also contributed to the lackluster rate of adoption in the API industry. So now that we've, we've got a firm understanding of blockchains, smart contracts, oracles, and the oracle problem, let's take a look at API 3 and the solution that we've built to combat this very critical issue in the market. Web 3.0 is an exciting new frontier that is fundamentally disrupting the internet and redefining the way that we do business with each other. Over the past 18 months alone, we've seen the birth of an entire new industry in decentralized finance or DeFi with growth in the tens of billions of dollars. And this is only possible due to there being new access to high quality financial data introduced to blockchain platforms and applications. But the data available in blockchain is still very sparse and almost solely limited to financial data. We truly are seeing an exponentially high and almost unfathomable technological revolution blossoming before us. And it's all reliant though on high quality data from API providers like yourselves. There's so much value to be gained from this technology. It really is kind of a shame that 
so far the space has has been walled off by gatekeepers who offer suboptimal ways to get involved, especially for API providers who have arguably the most valuable components needed in order for the space to continue to grow and for innovations to flourish. Current solutions to getting APIs onto blockchains have identified stakeholders entirely within their own ecosystem, while not considering at all that data providers are on the supply side and without them, there is no value creation possible. In our past experience as third-party Oracle node operators within an Oracle node network, um, before the team evolved to what is now API 3, we found that API providers want to get involved in blockchain. You guys understand how hot this market is, but how many of you want to relinquish control of your business to some third party operator who takes a cut of your profit and is not easy to hold accountable or have any kind of assurances that they'll handle your APIs with care? With the current high cost solutions and the bleeding edge nature of this space, it's kind of no wonder that API providers haven't adopted blockchain technology en masse yet, because currently there's this uh, chicken and the egg problem. If there currently is no historical demand for the type of APIs your business offers on blockchain applications, why would you take on all of these costs and risks and barriers to entry associated with providing your products and services on chain, only to find that maybe you don't have any demand anyway? There's plenty of reason to believe that the demand for all APIs in Web 3.0 will be very, very high. In fact, if you see healthy demand for your APIs currently, it stands to reason that there will be just as much demand in the future for those APIs in the blockchain space, if not more. But with almost non-existent demand forecasts and high barriers to entry specifically on the supply side, growth in this industry has been painfully slow precisely because of the lack of buy-in from API providers. At API3, these are all reasons why we developed AirNode, a first-party Oracle solution. AirNode is a simple, open-source, serverless function that is completely free to deploy and requires no blockchain development skill. It's also highly secure because it removes the third-party attack layer and allows you to rely on the rep reputation you've already built around your brand as a key source of trust, which is so much more valuable than the reputation of some third-party anonymous team of developers. By creating a first-party Oracle solution, we've effectively cut out the middleman and put the power and control of the supply back into the API endpoints and providers' uh, hands themselves. The key attributes of AirNode are that it can be de deployed very quickly and easily as part of your existing API infrastructure by running a single command on a terminal. It's designed to be set and forget and requires no specific know-how to deploy or operate because it's stateless and works as if the node were to reset itself every minute. Because it's fully managed serverless technology, it requires no operator management or ongoing maintenance. And because AirNode <clears throat> is stateless, it's also extremely resilient against any problems that would require operator intervention at all. It's built on pay-as-you-go services, too, so that you can keep your existing pricing models. And AirNode is implemented as a serverless function and doesn't require virtual instances for additional components, such as a database. Because of this, hosting AirNode is very inexpensive, if not free in most cases. Traditional Oracle nodes require the node operator to fund their node's wallet with cryptocurrency for it to be able to make the transactions to fulfill requests. And current solutions usually put the onus on the API provider to cover these costs and with crypto. The AirNode protocol is unique in that the requester covers all transaction costs. This means API providers running AirNode won't have to be concerned with keeping their node funded with cryptocurrencies, which also contributes to the set and forget nature of its design. Lastly, AirNode is implemented as a completely serverless function. It's easily portable and it will be able to support cloud providers such as AWS, Google Cloud Platform, Microsoft Azure, and more. A few things additionally that we are very excited to announce. Um, are that AirNode is currently the only GDPR compliant Oracle solution. And we have just recently secured a 10 year exclusivity partnership with the Open Bank Project. And 
with over 11,000 developers and fintechs using the Open Bank project, banks are able to tap into a global community of innovators who are keen to collaborate. And this is truly significant as it opens the door to further innovation in fintech and banking with the addition of blockchain specific use cases as well. According to a recent report by Statista published in March of this year, global cybersecurity spending will likely surpass $54 billion in 2021 as a best case scenario. Meanwhile, numerous reports on global spending for blockchain-based solutions are expected to see a compound annual growth rate of anywhere from 50 to 75% by 2025. Because of the dramatically high savings associated with superior security and automation facilitation, the interest in blockchain technology is growing exponentially. At API3, we believe that just as you have a lucrative and highly in-demand API that is used in Web 2.0, this will also be the case in Web 3.0. We're passionate about this industry and we see a future that's more cost efficient, meritocratic and superior to that of the current Web 2 infrastructure. We also believe that there are an insurmountable number of ways that value can be created if only API providers were to adopt the technology and had good reason and the capability to get involved. This is why we built AirNote to help foster mainstream adoption of blockchain technology and to reshape the way that we all do business together. So you might be asking yourself at this point, what's the catch or what does API3 get out of all of this? At API3, we understand that in order for this space to grow, we need API providers like you to, to get on board. And to do that, it needs to be a no brainer for you. We design AirNode in a no-nonsense, frictionless, set and forget, and completely free way, specifically because we know that if we make your APIs compatible with the blockchain, it will create a ton of demand for your APIs, and will also open the door to countless new opportunities to create and capture value from this new ecosystem of API endpoints. Our vision is to build insurance-based products and aggregation services that are quantifiably secure and unique to specific user groups in Web 3.0 and paid for by the consumer. We never will take a cut of your business. Instead, we aim to partner with you to open up this exciting new market so that we can mutually benefit from the value capture that will come out of that. We also will more than likely become your customers as well, as we build out solutions that require numerous data sources for specific proof of concepts and use cases currently in development. In the beginning of this discussion, we said blockchains can generally best be described as an analogous with the internet, and smart contracts are simply applications running on that new version of the internet. Additionally, we learned about how oracles can best be thought of as API gateways that serve data from the traditional web to blockchains and smart contracts. From there, we discussed the current state of oracles as third-party oper third um, operators and the inherent problems that arise from this traditional solution of intermediaries. Lastly, we talked about AirNode and how it effectively erases these barriers to entry so that API providers can tap into this new and exciting market because AirNode cuts out the middleman by creating first-party Oracle nodes that exist directly at the source of your APIs, which you have full control over with no strings attached. I hope that you found this information useful and that you have a better understanding of why blockchain technology is an exciting new frontier that you should not only care about, but adopt and future-proof your business. What questions do you have? Thanks, Mason. That was really thorough, uh, fantastic walkthrough of everything that AP3, AP, API3 is doing, uh, the blockchain opportunity there with APIs and your uh, offer to work with API providers. At the moment, I don't think we've got um, any, uh, any questions in the chat, but if anyone in our audience does want to uh, uh, post anything, we'll be keeping an eye on the chat window. So now's your time to um, ask Mason. Mason, if people don't, how do they get in touch with you after today? Yeah, so um, any questions can go right. directly to me, Mason at api3.org, and right. um, <clears throat> I would be happy to, to discuss more. Fantastic. And then maybe we've got a couple of minutes. You talked about the opportunities with open banking, and that's a, an area that you're uh, obviously investing or focusing on very heavily. Are there any other industries in particular that you see a real opportunity that's 
market ready now for uh, what you're offering and, and the opportunities to work with you? Yeah, the question. Absolutely. So um, one would definitely be parametric insurance. It's like low hanging fruit, really. There's so much opportunity there because of the Internet of Things, too. There's there's um, all of the data and components are already there. Right. So really, there just needs to be a solution to get the data on chain. Um, but really, there's countless things that you can you can really think of And one way to really um, kind of think about the, the possibilities in general, because it's such a big question, right? Um, the best way to really look at it is any time that there is an intermediary that you would normally have to pay for them to kind of like validate uh, that things are trustworthy, um, those, those, all of those situations can be completely redefined and uh, mitigated in blockchain technology. That's really the value add of, of doing things on the blockchain. Right. Okay. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for uh, speaking with us today and for your presentation. Uh, great to have you here with us at API Days. Thanks, Mark. It was a pleasure being here.